We're going to talk about one of Figma's best features, Auto Layout, which allows you to arrange and rearrange elements and quickly create responsive layouts. With the latest Figma updates that were recently released, Auto Layout is even more powerful. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to use it to speed up your workflow. Hi guys, my name is Chili and I'm a senior UX product designer based in London. If you haven't used Auto Layout before, don't worry, I will start with the basics and I've made sure to break down the more complex videos for you to make sure that it's simple. So what is Auto Layout? Auto Layout allows us to create layouts and group elements and add rules for spacing so you can arrange and rearrange your designs automatically. With the more advanced features, you can also make these layouts responsive. Here are the basics of what you can do with Auto Layout. Before Auto Layout, if you wanted to rearrange your layout, you would have to drag elements around and this took time as you had to re-measure all the spacing. With Auto Layout, you can move things with more ease, with the spacing already measured out consistently and it's applied automatically. It can help you to design faster when you're duplicating elements and rearranging your layout. I will add timestamps to the video chapter so you can save this video and always come back to it when you need to refresh your memory. Here is a layout of a banking app, for example. If we want to add an Uber transaction here after the Starbucks, what you normally do is select all of these, maybe move this down, bring this in, and then you would have to make sure it is aligned, the spacing, and then try and move everything back up. So that is without auto layout. Let me show you how auto layout changes your workflow. As you can see, as I'm hovering those blue boxes, you can see that there are a few auto layout frames and groups already within this layout. I take, I hover it where I want to and you can see where it's going to pin and everything else moves down already measured with the correct spacing and everything else moves down for it. So that is the basics of how auto layout improves your workflow, but there is so much more you can do with it. Let me go through everything. So this is how you get started with auto layout. We've got these five squares. So if you want to add auto layout, you press a shift A, as you can see here, auto layout added, or you can always right hand click and add auto layout. On the left here, you can see the group of it with everything in it is like this instead of a usual group. So this is what a auto layout layout looks like. On the right here, we've got the auto layout settings. As you can see, it's going horizontal. You can change it to go vertical. And then you've got the spacings here. And you've got the different alignments. And I will show you exactly how they work in a minute. One of the new features is a wrap feature. So if we go horizontal and we add a wrap feature, what you can do with this is everything will start wrapping onto the next line when the auto layout frame is too small. And then here you've got the spacings vertically as well. So here's the padding. You've got horizontal and vertical padding, which creates spacing within inside the box. If you add 20 pixels, that's what you get. And now the group is bigger than the element within it. You can use this for a lot of things, but the most common thing is for buttons. So if I start a text box there and then shift A and this it automatically has a horizontal padding of 10 and at the top 10 as well. So we can make this a bit bigger. So it's 20 that way. If we fill this like that, there you go. You've got a button. The great thing about this padding is that if you change the text, it will grow with it. So this is how you make those dynamic buttons. Okay. So here we've got these elements that are different sizes and I've used a different sizing so you can see the alignment better. So we're going to put this in an auto layout. And as you can see, it's horizontal and it is in the center. So if we align it to the bottom, this is what all these different alignments do. Next are the advanced auto layout settings. So if you click on these three dots, um, it talks about the stroke. So at the moment, the strokes are included inside of the auto layout frame. So if we want to exclude it, it starts outside of that and then you can see if you were stacking these on top of each other is to decide which one is first and which one is last. And then the last one is the text alignment. So if we put this in an auto layout frame, as you can see with the alignment, they are bound to the bottom, but they sit on different baselines. 
if we go into the advanced settings, change the baseline like that, they then sit on the same baseline. This is helpful when you're using different texts in design. For example, for a design like this, we want to make sure this is sat on the same baseline. So we go into the advanced settings and then we change that. And there you go. Helps you to align things better. So the next settings are these right here. Here we've got hug. This means that when you add things to the auto layout frame, it grows and hugs all the contents within it. So if we duplicate these, it grows and hugs them. So the opposite of that is if we select the frame again and then we give it a fixed width. That means no matter how much things grow, the frame remains the same size. You can then use this to clip content outside of this frame. So this paragraph of text has a frame on it. Another thing we can do with text is make it grow and shrink with the frame. So instead of adding the setting onto the auto layout frame, you want to grab the text and in this drop down, you want to select fill container. That means when you select the frame, the parent frame, as you are growing and shrinking it, it will then start behaving responsively. So one of the main reasons that people get frustrated with auto layout is when there is an auto layout frame within their design and they're trying to move something above it, on top of it. And this is usually what happens. And this can be very frustrating to people. You've got two options here. You either put this in a group and that stops anything that goes on top of it going inside the auto layout frame, or there's also something called absolute position. So I've popped that in here. And if you go to this little button, absolute position, that means that this is not affected by the rules and constraints of the auto layout. However, it's still within the group. So if I went like this, it's still clipped because that is the rule of the auto layout frame. So now let's use everything we learned to create a design. Here are all the elements of a blog post. I'm gonna start off by putting certain elements in auto layout groups together. So these are a group. So let's start here and then I'm gonna add that into an auto layout. Um, what size do I want that to be? Eight. And then I'm going to group this with this, maybe less. And then we're going to group this together. And then next, we're going to group everything else together. So you can have groups within groups of auto layout. Let's make this 16. Next, we want to add, let me change the color of this because it is black on black. So we want to add this on top here. And as you can see, it is abiding to the rules of auto layout. So we go here and use absolute position and we can place that wherever we want it to be. So next I want to fill this and make it into a card. So we will use the padding and you can just fill it just like you would any other shape. So, and let's round off these corners. Okay, great. So what about if we want to grow and shrink it? So you have to then go into every single element here and fill it to the container. I think those are the only ones that you want to do that with. I mean, it would be great if that image didn't stretch like that, but you get the point. And then how do we make sure that this is moving with it? We can use these constraints. Let's see. There you go. So what I did is I moved it from top left to top right here. Here I have created three blog posts. Let's see how they behave. So they do grow and shrink, which is great, which is what we want. However, at a certain point, we kind of want it to wrap onto the next line. So I have selected wrap, but why isn't it jumping onto the next line? So go onto the width. This is really easy to forget because it's grayed out. So you go into the width and then you add a minimum width, which is 310. So we're going to do that for all of them. Minimum width of 310. And minimum width of... Let's try that again. 
Oh dear. I don't think the middle one worked. Let's try that again. There you go. And that is how you can use auto layout to create responsive layouts. And that is it. It will take a bit of practice to get the hang of it because there are so many settings to take into consideration, which is why a lot of people get frustrated with it, but it just takes a bit of practice. Auto layout will definitely change the way you design and help you make changes quicker. If you have found that useful, please help me out by hitting the like button and subscribing to more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Thank you.